Space, the final frontier. This is the podcast State of the Federation. It's continuing mission. To preview strange new ships. To seek out new builds and new combinations. To boldly go where no show has gone before. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Federation, and welcome back. Happy New Year. It is 2015, and it is the first episode of State of the Federation since, well, last year. <laughs> Yay! Welcome back. Hope everyone had a great holiday. We are here with more Star Trek Attack Wing, and as always, I have my lovely, wonderful co-host, starting with Tucker. Tucker, how have you been doing this year? Um, pretty good. Um... Made it back to L.A. to visit for a bit. Got to hang out with uh, some old player friends um, while they played uh, quotation mark R.I.F. 3 and quotation mark. Interesting. <laughs> um, after the rules team gutted the scenario, the T.O. just went fuck it and made something up of his own. That's pretty cool. Which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're on the uh, if you're on the community page, find Cheyenne Cummings and message him and ask him for the scenario. It's based on the um, what is it, the Antarian Rally from Voyager. It's pretty good. <laughs> that sounds fun. And of course, yeah. we also have David with us again. David, how are you doing? Uh, myself doing pretty good. Star Trek. Yeah. My uh, my store ran into the distributor problem, so our tournament has been delayed into February. Yeah. Well, it's because the store has other events going every Saturday for the rest of January. Gotcha. Yeah, unfortunately, my, one of my local stores has kind of had that problem as well. After the after the lateness of the uh, of the delays, we got to push back to this month, and then over the winter holiday, the event coordinator uh, got replaced. He left the company, and so now we are waiting on what to do with the rest of the things. I can hear that. Hello? Yep. We can hear you, Tucker. Are you challenging? Hear me what? I don't know. What are you doing? Uh. Did you rip? It sounded like you ripped open a bag of chips or something. That was. Oh, I know what happened. Yeah, I was setting something down next to the computer. Gotcha. All right, but yes, we are back for 2015. Hello, Doctor Nickett, Dean87, uh, Math Guy. That's you, David. Stop trying to trick me to, to, to welcoming you again. <laughs> no, no, I'm just talking back to the guys in the chat. <laughs> oh, fine. Be be nice and welcoming, you Federation pig dog. Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe. It's it's insidious like root beer, right? <laughs> oh, man. I got a Vulcan ship off of that. <laughs> nice. But yeah, uh, we are going through all of our Wave 11 previews, which are currently, uh, at least at my global game store, slated for a January 28th release. Uh, they were supposed to be due out last week, but again, shipping delays are causing problems, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, we have the previews from StarTrek.com to go over. We have the... We will be doing... Man, what order did I actually have these in? <laughs> the Herogen, the Drone... And then the fighters. Sound good to you guys? Yup. All right, let's do this. Let's see if I actually click on the right picture the first time. I did! Huzzah! We have Herogen. So for those of you who don't know what the heck these guys are, they were from Voyager. They were the uh, they were the hunting, honor-bound, weird nomad race that was not the Kazon and not the Klingon. I don't know. I actually kind of liked them in the show. Um, I thought they were pretty cool. 
Uh, for those of you who remember the video game Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, uh, the the boss from whom you get the Tetrion Pulse Disruptor is Hyrogen. Wow, I have no, I never even heard of that game. Oh my god, seriously? <laughs> what no, was it I'm for? Serious. Is it a computer one? Yeah, it's um, it, it's an old game. It was based on the Quake Three Arena engine, and it is fantastic. Go play it now. I'm not even kidding. It's amazing. It's a great. That sounds game. cool. All right, guys, that's the end of the show today. I'm gonna go down. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've only played the demo of it, and that was really good. I'll definitely have so, to check that out. All yeah. Right. <clears throat> But and also, also was... if you're a Star Trek Online player and ever wondered where the Federation kit graphics come from, it's all based on that game. Anyway, we should stop talking about this. And we should, and we are talking back about the Herogen. So, yeah, they were actually, they were actually one. I think one of the better races of Voyager. I enjoyed them anyway. Mm -hmm. Way better I than agree. the Carrot Heads. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the two parter they had with the Holodeck Civil War or oh, uh, Holodeck was... World War Two mm -hmm. that was well written. It was a little weird, but I'll... Yeah, it was weird, but it was still interesting. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, I believe we actually have some of the characters in this pack. So, yeah. starting with our ship, we have the Alpha Hunter Herogen Warship. Uh, the named version is a 4234 with two tech, two weapon, and one crew slot for 26 points. After you move, you may perform a sensor echo action with a one maneuver as a free action, even if you are not cloaked. Uh, they are independent faction, and I enjoy them quite a lot. They are you're looking at your Federation standard kind of bar, evade, target lock, scan, and battle stations. So yeah, I don't know. I I am very famously. I got in a huge fight with a bunch of people on Board Game Geek about this. I do not oh, like I know. this ship. <laughs> You're, um, are you just not a fan at all of it, or what was it? Just because it's uh, inferior to Borg? No, it, what it is is this. Um, first of all, uh, it, it, it is a it is a um, it is a ship that has seven durability and only three hull. Um, which I mean, I mean, this is a ship that can consistently get one shotted by uh, even with two agility, can consistently get one shotted by Borg. By Klingons, by a number of ships with a flagship, um, and combine that with the fact that this ability is just not really that relevant against things with 360 degree arcs, which are the main forces in this meta. Mm -hmm. Now, Borg, Dorsal it, Weapons Array, Voyager. Exactly. Um, you know, Dorsal Phaser Bank now. That's the um, one I was looking for. Well, Dorsal Weapons Array 2, though. I mean, Dorsal Weapons Array in a Mirror Universe Enterprise D is a force. You know? Because they can, they can add the dice to it via the, uh, the named ship ability. Mm -hmm. And so, right now, I mean, it's the same problem that, that I think you sort of were talking about when we were, when we were discussing the, um, the assimilated Burrells. Is that, you know, on paper, two tech slots, fed action bar... But it's just going to get blown out of the sky by, you know, the Dominion, the Borg, the Mirror Universe, pretty much everybody who sees play these days. It's fighters, for crying out loud. Oh, yeah, fighters. With, yeah, without Cloak, this, that, that's going to hurt this one a little bit. So, basically what you're saying is it's just a little too fragile for what it wants to do, and, uh, the, abil and the ability is just irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? If the sensor okay. echo wasn't an action, I could see it being helpful. Um, if only because you can get out of range. It's a free action. Does that count? Oh. Oh, free action. Okay. Yeah, that does help it a little bit. Um, it doesn't help you against Borg. So, take that for what it's worth. But mm -hmm. it can help you against fighters, because fighters are very limited with their firing arc. I mean, 90 range 2. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the most limited firing arcs in the game. I, I know there's ways, you know, Galar Phaser Banks, etc. Um, if you run those things. If you run those things. And keep, it, uh, well, keep, keep in mind that the resource Hideki's are a 90-90, even if the uh, rear arc's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Uh, 
I, I, I still want to see the the bass plate on this thing. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 90. 90. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if this... If for some reason it's a 180, this <laughs> ship is a lot better. Yeah, if this is a 180, I'm much, I'm much less down on this ship than I am now. I just don't think it's going to be. If this is a 180, then the sensor echo gains a lot of value, and it's still incredibly fragile, but if it's 180, and especially if it's maneuverable then it may still have uses. Mm -hmm. Cause I could definitely see this being more useful against uh, the dorsal phaser array and uh, the Voyager than things like the Borg. Let's say we live in a meta where Borg is banned. Cause I feel like this might be a concession that we might have to make at some point. Yeah. Uh, how does this fare up against everything else? What would be the big hitter? What would be the big hitters in a non-Borg meta would probably be what? Voyager, uh, Scimitar and Enterprise-E? And Dominion ships. Which one were you saying, Tucker? Come back to uh. a little bit at least. Well, uh. um, pretty much all of those are ninety arcs with the possibility on the feds of a range two three sixty. Mm -hmm. So it's still not my favorite because remember we're about to be done with blind buys, so we're about to re-enter a. Uh, a format where we're going to be looking at things like three 40-point customized ships. Oh, but, back to 120-point land. Mm -hmm. Or... Two-ship, two-fighter. Yeah, two-fighters to start... I mean, you know, uh, where we could have a real ship, two Surox, and two fighters. So, Or two real ships and two fighters. <laughs> I don't know. Too. I don't really like the Surox, but hey. I can be cool with that. Yeah. But I, I guess the other thing to take note of is that this is the named ship, and it's the only one that can do that. The generic ship will be a 4233 three without the sensor echo, and I think that's going to hurt it quite a lot. Yeah, that's going to. That's never played the generic ever. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate. But other than that, you know, it's not, it's not a terrible ship with seven. With the seven hit points, most of your ships outside of Borg are going to max out at seven with some kind of reroll. But usually that would hopefully only hit you six, six, six hits regularly. So it has a mm -hmm. decent shot, I think. Especially if you can add a defensive upgrade or two to this. And I don't know if I recall correctly, but aren't there one or two in this pack? Why, yes, Will. I think there are. <laughs> yeah, this is a ship I would save my battle station token for defense. Indeed. All right. That's and a good thought, yeah. We will get yeah. to those upgrades in a second. For now, we have Captain's. Our, oh, this is interesting. I did not notice this the first time through. We have yeah. our generic Alpha Herogen. Yeah, you didn't know it was. You didn't notice it wasn't unique. I didn't. It's, this has not. I did not notice since Borg was the only ones I thought about for those. Yeah. Makes me wonder why we can't have multiple bio ship pilots like this. <laughs> Let it go. Let okay. it go. When attacking. Skill 6, 4 points, generic Alpha Herogen. When attacking with your primary weapon, you may convert one of your blank results into a hit result. Has a talent, even. It's cool. It's a Gorn Captain. It's independent. It's got a talent. You can run as many as you want. Damn. I mean, yeah. This is, this is now the independent Captain against which you measure every other independent Captain. I'm not a fan of the of the ship, you know, of the Alpha Hunter and the Herogen Warship class, but oh my god, the upgrades in this pack are fantastic. <laughs> I mean, Faction Pure, throw this guy on a Sue or something? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Throw him on multiple... Well, you can't throw him on multiple Soons, but whatever. Yeah. Well, or anything with an independent flagship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, gen generally a fairly solid ability. I mean, it was great when it was on Bohica. It was great when it was on Grenade, even though that didn't see as much play. And it was great on... Mm -hmm. Who else am I thinking of that had this kind of ability? Uh, Convert yeah. Whatever ability, converting blanks to something is magnificent. Mm -hmm. Klingon flagship saw a lot of use. Yes, that was a good one. Yeah, no, I mean, and this is the thing, is that because of the way, you know, even in penalty-pure environments for the people who still play in those... You know, um, 
this is a guy, if you're if you're throwing a flagship on a ship, you can just start with this guy. You know, this guy is better than a lot of the other faction captains. Now, mm -hmm. is he amazing? No, but he's, I mean, he's a great baseline. If you can't think of a different captain, run this guy. He's never not good. I would say, though, the only thing that I am still disappointed with is that he is a May ability, so he only works on one attack. So not quite as good as if I wanted to, say, put him as the captain on my Mirror Universe uh, Negvar. My Regent's flagship as a flagship, but hey. Regent's flagship flagship. <laughs> yeah. David, do you like this guy? Oh, yeah. What's not, like, what's not what? to like about him? <laughs> mm, I don't know. He seems very smug. Maybe that's uh, a thing. Wait, Hello? wait. Worf to say, oh, wait, 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 we meant to make him unique. Oh, no, no. He doesn't even have a name. That should, he should be fine. But, Neither did the Gorn commander. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, let's move on to our named captain, Captain Carr, who is unique. Uh, if I recall correctly, this is the guy that actually set up the whole World War II scenario. Yeah. Oh, one thing not to like about the Alpha Commander. You can't make him a fleet captain. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, because he has to be unique. Yeah. Eh. That's the only thing not to like. That's why we have Carr, right? Yes. <laughs> Alright, so Carr is a five-point independent captain with two talent slots. Uh, this puts him in a very small range of uh, commanders. And uh, eight captain skill. When attacking during the modify attack dice step, you may reroll any one of your attack dice twice. In addition, if your captain skill is greater than the target ship's skill number during the roll attack dice step, gain plus one attack die. This is pretty cool too. I mean, not to sell the not to sell the guy we just saw short. This guy is pretty nice. Uh, you reroll one of your attack dice twice, which is almost as good as a straight up conversion. And again, it's the same uh, you may, so you only get it one time, same as the other guy. But in addition, if your captain skill is greater than the target ship's skill number, uh, this, with an 8 skill, uh, add on top of that some kind of admiral or a fleet captain, uh, 9 or 10 skill, that works against pretty much every almost everybody. It always works against fighters if you need it. And it, yep. works, against, and it works on all attacks. Because he is a, that is not an optional thing you can do. It is a requirement. Right, so he's going to get that extra attack that he only gets the re-roll once. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's still not a bad thing. He, he, he's another, he's one of those weird two-parters where part of his ability you can use and part of the other ability you can uh, optionally use. Can you guys hear me? Yep, I oh, gotcha. Yeah, sorry, I'm having a little, I was having a little connection trouble, I should be fine. Um, so what are we saying? Uh, we were just talking about Carr, how he's pretty good. Uh, part part required and partially uh, Worf may ruling, can't do every, can't do everything every turn. Okay. But good good skill level if, if bumped makes him practically always get his ability. Aside from those Picard, Fleet Captain, Admiral Kirk combos, but but then you get it against every other of their ships, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those ten, I think those have sort of been on the downslide since uh, the Dreadnought ruling came out. Yeah, because yeah. that's 11 points on a ship, which you want to have a 30-point ship anyway already, so that leaves you, what, room for one upgrade, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, pretty cool ability, and especially with... the. A very nice high, high captain skill. Are there any other higher captain skill independents? Like, uh, this is Khan uh, level. Gen, Gen Con can be. Mm -hmm. Con, Con Reliant is 8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, the number of 9 skill captains is pretty darn low, too. Uh, Shinzon, Picard, Kirk, Limited Edition Martok. Terrible Locutus, oh. and uh, one of the Borg Queens, pretty much. So. And hey, if Locutus wants to be anything besides blank ever, uh, he pretty much winds up being lower skill. 
Though, there is a captain coming up later today that has the potential to be higher skill. Oh, indeed. All right, so that's it for our captains on our ship. We're going to uh, pick up the pace just a little bit. Moving on to talents. Full reverse during the activation phase after you reveal your maneuver dial, but before you move, you may discard this card to perform a one or two full astern maneuver instead of your chosen maneuver. This is a white maneuver. Where was this card for Arena? <laughs> Where has this card been since, like, day one of the game? Mm. I mean, seriously. This card is not broken. Better than full stop. Implement. Good point cost. Yeah, good point cost. Just options. <laughs> Love it. Love, Love it. Card perfectly implemented. Probably one of the best things that WizKids has done in the past six months, honestly. Uh, and I mean, they've done some good things in the past, as far as ships. <laughs> I'm talking about actual releases, but this card is actually one of the best things that they've done. Back it up, back it up. <laughs> it does a thing. It's not overcosted. It's not overpowered. Yeah, I was even, I was even thinking of it that strong. But when when David is so passionate about it, I realize just how how inundated I have gotten to things with uh, being very off kilter. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, guys, we like this one a lot. If you got the uh, if you got the uh, space for it. Yeah, two point discard, not five point discard. Thank you. The only, yeah, the only thing that could be better is if it was not unique. If it was not unique, I think it would be problematic. Uh, one, if they put the limited one per ship text. Hmm. Semi. We'll, we'll start with a semi limited unique -y kind of thing. Well, uh, now that you can't steal from your own fleet, I think uh, it would be fine, but. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, so stalking not... mode. Stalking mode, hey. Stalking mode. Five point independent talent. Action. Discard this card to target a ship at range one to three. That target ship's skill number is reduced by two. In addition, during the roll attack die step, gain plus one attack die against the target ship. Both of these effects last till the end of the game. Uh, something that should be noted is that the target ship's skill number is reduced by two. That, of course, is always an effect. But the game plus one attack die against the ship, even though it does not say you or your, it is only limited to the ship that originally had stalking mode on it. I asked this in the rules form, just to be safe. You know what, though? Honestly, still probably worth it. Mm -hmm. Reducing by two puts, oh, puts pretty much everyone in range of car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it really screws over first strike people. Yeah. Because you mean, can use... Look, well... It'd be, it might be hard to get it off in the first round before they shoot, but it'll help. As we all know, I am not a fan of five-point discards, but this is one I would run. Yeah. Um, I mean, increasing your attack die plus one for the rest of the game is pretty good. Um, it's sad that this was not around in the days of Dreadnoughts, but um, it is what it is. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, with that said... I just want to take a second and thank WizKids for not making stalking mode another fucking cloaking device knockoff. <laughs> oh, come on. You don't like the Kazon, uh, whatever the hell that thing was? Master, Master circuitry? circuitry? Yeah. <laughs> or at least if they're going to do cloaking knockoff, at least make it look, at least make it act differently. Yeah. Still, though, this is a great card. Um, it This is a card where... And the nice thing about this in full reverse is this is a card that's going to be useful no matter what you're playing against. Mm -hmm. um, anybody, I mean, even against Borg, because they don't have any agility. So the plus one attack die matters a lot more. And, they can, and of course, they tend to be bigger ships in, in general. Right. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I can say about this is a funny little trick that you might want to use before the Wharf rulings get a hold of it. 
Uh, you can use it on one of your own ships on a zero skill captain and make them a negative one, which means they always go first and can block. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just uh, silly, but hey, whatever. You never know. Oh. <laughs> Someone will find a way. All right, next talent, Intercept Course. Four-point independent talent. You may discard this card immediately before you move in order to change your maneuver for this round. If an enemy ship is in your forward firing arc after you complete this move, you may perform a battle station action as a free action. This upgrade may only be purchased for a Herogen ship and costs plus five for any captain other than Car or a Herogen captain. Carrot, implying that a Herogen captain, but let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about what? Oh, another Herogen captain? Yeah. No, it's it's car or a Herogen captain. Mm. Ergo, car is not Herogen. <laughs> well, maybe it's an inclusive or instead of an exclusive or. But yes. Or is yeah, or is by logical definition inclusive. But... Yeah. Anyways, uh, four sorry, point... I have a math degree. That's four... the only reason I go there. <laughs> uh, Four point Uhura. Yeah. One point more, but That's you get a free battle stations out of it. Yeah. This is probably this is the worst talent of the three, but I don't know. I I don't hate the card. I mean I I, I, yeah. I would say you saying saying it's the worst of the three, I think does not say uh does isn't exactly a knock against it. I like it a little bit more because back in the regional days uh, when faked messages and thought maker were a possible thing, this thing countered them and gave you a bonus. Yeah, I mean, the the main downside of this is you have to use it on a Herogen ship. True. Um, which is a ship that already has battle stations. So, uh... yeah. If another Herogen ship ever comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be it a blind ship or another retail ship, then this could see some play. Yeah. Because that other ship may not have battle stations. <gasps> yes, and I'm sorry, can we go back to stocking mode for a second? Because I just I just remembered something. Stocking I just mode. realized something. So Will. Yes. You know first officer, the officer resource card? Yes. You know how people always ask what happens if you start with a captain that's below skill 4, and the answer is it's not skill 4, because it has to be reduced below 4? <laughs> I told you someone would! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, there's the definitive answer. <laughs> Alright, moving on, let's keep, it, let's keep up the pace. Good, good card talents all around. Uh, let's see. Photon torpedoes. Basic photon torpedoes may fire out of forward or rear arcs. So I think I hint that this might be a rear arc ship. But you never know. Yeah. Uh, uh, do we so have... did every Romulan weapon. But yeah. Well, just the plas... Oh, no, I guess photon torpedoes did too. These, yeah. are the same, these are the same that are on the Valjean. Yeah. The yeah. exact same. So moving on. Tarange, three-point independent crew. Add a weapon slot to your upgrade bar. If your captain's skill is ever below a four when you are attacking during the deal damage step, you may discard your captain to add plus one damage. If you do this, this card then becomes your new captain with a skill of seven. Stocking mode. <laughs> uh, well, this one isn't as restricted because it doesn't have to be reduced before. It just has to be less than four, period. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you can you can put him on a ship with a generic one point one skill captain and have him assassinate the captain, or stuff the captain in a torpedo tube. I don't I don't remember what was this representing. Uh, I think this was the guy. I think he was like the the beta to the captain, the alpha, who was sort of on board with working with Voyager, and then he killed him because he thought he was weak or something. It's one of those things. I have to look over the... I have to watch the episode again. It was a good episode. Yeah, 
Yeah, seriously. I, I mean, that's the thing. One nice thing about the Hirogen, if you if they show up, you know you're in for a good episode. I can't remember any bad episodes with Hirogen in them. Yeah, I can't yeah. either. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking of uh, I'm just thinking of Seven of Nine versus The Rock right now. I know there was a Hirogen in that episode. Yeah, dude. Not only was that Hirogen, he was played by uh, J.G. Hertzler, which is great because the owner of the arena is played by Jeffrey Combs. So Seven of Nine gets kidnapped by Weyoun to fight in an arena trained by Martok. Yes. <laughs> Go back and watch it with that in mind. It makes it great. That was a great episode. But yeah, for Tarange, not bad. I mean, that, that's uh, as good as any of the other slot upgraders, number one. For three, a really with great, a little bonus ability. He's, if you're building a Sakona boat for whatever reason, he's a really great add-on there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, put a captain on there that's like low skill and gives you a discount Q or something. Um, and then just uh, kill him cool. and have a better captain take over. Or uh, it's independent, so give it a uh, Calvin. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, he works nicely on the Scorn that doesn't have a weapon slot. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but I'm not sure what you would, what weapon you would want to put on there, and why you wouldn't want to. Maybe photon torpedoes that actually give you five dice. I guess, but in that case, why am I not running Sakona? Yeah, the problem yeah. with the problem with Gorn is that its ability only works on its primary weapon, if I recall correctly. True. Yeah, it's true. Well, it's a consideration. Maybe subnucleonic beam would be a good one to go with him. Maybe. Uh, five point independent weapon for four damage at range one to two, or four attack dice anyway. Uh, disable this card to perform this attack, so it doesn't need a target lock. In addition to inflicting normal damage for each uncancelled hit or crit result, disable a crew upgrade on the target ship of your choice. Cost plus five SP for any ship other than a Hirogen. So, what are we saying? Uh, what's the scimitar? The scimitar weapon, right? Thaleron beam light. Yeah, and I like it better than Thaleron Beam because you can use it more than once. Which would be cool, and it's not unique. Yeah, and, oh, and it, it does damage. Ones. It does damage and has the effect. Yes. So you could easily do four disables and four damage. Yeah, which with Thaleron Beam would require uh, eight hits uncancelled. I guess that requires four hit hits uncancelled here, but. Mm. Nine hits uncancelled if you also want to get the captain. Well, yeah. you, also, you, you, if, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Range 1 to 2 is not my favorite, but put this on a ship with a 180 arc, I could, I could like it. I could learn to love this. Yeah. Um, my only problem is the things that would be most affected by it are things that are, are ships that are running 4 or 5 defense dice normally with yeah, the aid of true. crew like Sulu and Paris. So it seems pretty neat. It's a little bit of disruption, a little bit of attack, but I think the things that it disrupts are already going to be strong against it. Yeah, maybe put it on a scan boat. Remind me, is scan boating still a thing? No, I don't. Scan boating? Yeah, it's like I don't know. Like super tiny prize. Yeah. Oh, Not that really. thing. Get it, getting like three three scan tokens for minus four defense dice. Yeah. That could exactly. work. Exactly. I haven't seen any recently, but it could it could come back. Uh, even though fleet officers got nerfed heavily. Yeah. I don't know. All right. I like it. Let's. Uh, we're we're running a little bit long. Let's talk about the uh, the uh, the monotanium. Yeah. Monotanium armor plating three point tech. Whenever an enemy ship attempts to acquire a target lock on your ship, roll two defense dice. If you roll at least one evade result, the target lock action has no effect. No ship may be equipped with more than one monotanium armor plating. Action, disable this card to remove a red target lock token from your, beside your ship and the corresponding blue one. Um, three points for, a, for target lock resistance. This is amazing. You like it a lot. Look, I it was okay. as as a Borg player, okay, ah, where you don't have battle stations, where I don't have battle stations, where I don't even have defense dice, okay, and the fighters, 
yes, but just just roll with me here. As a board player, the thing I fear more than almost any other upgrade in the game is transphasic torpedoes. Oh. Now, I can work around the 9090 Arc of Voyager, mm-hmm. but if I misplay by even a few millimeters, I mean, this is what happened to me in round three of the Swiss in the Colorado Regionals. But Carl got me into range of his firing arc by like two millimeters, and that was all of my shields and two or three of my hull. Boom. Yeah, I mean, so this says... Now, as a Borg player, am I going to run this? Almost certainly not. But this says, just the existence of this card says, you have to think very carefully about building a build that depends on target lock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, since since Cloak kind of went out of style for the most part, uh, right. this would be the thing to worry about. This, gives, this, gives, this puts a little bit of the fear back in the... Uh, Exactly. Exactly. And it works better than Sulu. Yeah, and it's three points, non-unique. Toss it on your sideboard. I mean... Toss it on your sideboard and be like, oh, look, I'm going up against someone with torpedoes. Off you go. Yep. Quick, uh, staple it to the hull. Boom, baby. Use some Use some Elmer's glue. <laughs> oh... Isn't that? You could just see a Herogen out there in a space suit with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Get the monotanium armor plating on there! Silly Herogen. <laughs> Hammers don't work in space. <laughs> it's like it's like putting snow tires on your car, right? I mean, this is a this is space snow tires. I thought it was the chains, but okay, works. Floridian. Yes, now, 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 now we've got. Now we've got armor plating being lashed to your hull with chains. The Rogen are really the Rogen are now MacGyvers of the universe. Listen, like this is even the least crazy thing we've seen attempted on Star Trek. <laughs> All right, next tech upgrade we've got, and I like this one: sensor network, four point tech upgrade. During the planning phase, after all ships have chosen their maneuvers, you may disable this card to target one ship anywhere in the play area. Oh. Look at that ship's maneuver dial and then choose your maneuver. The target ship cannot change its maneuver after you've looked at it. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, this upgrade may only be purchased for a Herogen ship. Yeah, but it's non unique. Indeed. Oh, God, you could run a fleet of just four Herogen ships with four sensor networks. That would be. That would be ugly. Potentially four Herogen ships with two sensor networks each. Uh. I know that because we know the named one has two tech slots. We don't know how many the generic one does. Yeah. Generic will probably only have one. But the thing is, with sensor network, you can use you can use your sensor network to discover where your opponent's going. Then you could use any of the other maneuver altering uh, cards like Aaron Hansen or Uhura or even uh, not Tarange. Where is it? Intercept course. So that only one of your ships has to use the sensor network, but all of your ships know where it is and can adjust for it. I think it's pretty cool. I like knowing I like knowing everything. So this this plays in my control freak uh, nature. I'm, I'm look. I'm not sure that I would run this over other four point options, but I'm not sure that I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Having it be disabled is nice. Yes. I, I don't like the discard ones, but the disable is nice. Get a, get a little action economy in there. You can be doing this every turn pretty easily, and still have still have some good offensive or defensive ability. Sure, yeah. Martok as, eight. As, especially if you're going to be using the uh, the uh, named version of the ship with Car, and you're going up against say uh, the crazy thirteen skill Picard Kirk. What's your majiggers? Because you can still sensor echo in or out of where you expect their ship will be, since you have a good idea. Since sensor echo is usually much better when you have a higher skill captain. Yeah. I can see how Rogan's doing a lot of blocking strategies. It'd be pretty cool. Mm. 
Blo blocking strategies for people who are higher level than them and just murdering people who are lower level than them because everything gives them additional things against lower skills. Yeah. Okay, maybe not everything, but good things. That was pretty cool. Uh, but that is all we have for that one. F uh, final final thoughts on the uh, the whole package? I like it. Get at least one, maybe two. I'd say wait on a second. Uh, until you, uh, until we see the specifics of it, uh, I would say get one, and depending on how much you think you're going to want monotanium and multiple uh, alpha herogen, get more than one. Mm -hmm. I'll go for I one. Mean, this is a, get, get this, get this for the cards, not for the ship. I might even want to throw. I just even want to try the ship in it too. The only problem is, of course, it's a three hull, so that means you can't bring fighters along. Teardrops. That is, that is going to be one of the measures for all ships in the near future and like forever. Is uh, Can they take fighters? But alright. That is our Rogen preview. Not running too far behind. Moving on to the Romulan drone, which should be quick because it is special and weird. 